It's time for another EV here on Not Beyond Cars, and this is quite an EV. It's touted as the world's first electric MPV. It's the Maxxis MIFA 9. Now, the 9 is not to do with the amount of passengers it can carry. It's a seven-seater, but something that seven-seaters generally suffer from is they're good for interior space, but the boot suffers because of the extra row. But not so much in this car, and we'll get to all that a bit later on in the video. So, first of all, hit subscribe if you have haven't yet please come and join us on this journey thank you for those of you that are here from the start we're in beautiful Kong here today in Mayo so this thing is absolutely huge it's it's really really long over five meters but it doesn't necessarily drive like that this car today is sitting on 19 inch alloy wheels how does the ride quality get on with that we'll discuss in the video the nose of it certainly the headlights remind me of the latest generation of Range Rover you've got a tiny little groove here there's little piano keys just on the front of the grille and then a huge amount of space going on on the front of the car so some people probably love the face others may not be so sure so for this battery it's a 90 kilowatt hour battery it promises a city range of about 350 kilometers i think that's kind of there thereabouts i'll get into economy later on when we're driving it's a lithium ternary iron battery slightly different to a standard lithium iron i'm not going to go into the details of it if you're that interested in that level of batteries you know i love doing videos for kind of normal people but it's an interesting point Google it if you want to know more. So this car has an 11 uh, AC onboard charger. You can use your on-street chargers up to 11 kilowatts in terms of speed. And then the car itself will hover around about 80 kilowatts on a fast charger. It's, it can get technically to about 80% uh, in half an hour, roughly half an hour if you're using one of those faster chargers. But interestingly, charging this car today, even at 85%, when generally the speed kind of throttles down, it was still doing 52 kilowatt charging. So that was pretty good. It got between 85 and 100% really, really quickly. Uh, obviously, I presume that's intentional, but that is a, that's a good point because normally they, now towards 90 plus, it was slowing down to 35 kilowatts, but still very, very decent because a lot of cars slow it right down. So all the cars have discs all around some EVs give you drums in the back, 19-inch uh, alloys, as I mentioned. These kind of have little aerodynamic covers over the outside of the rim, and they're easier to replace if someone does scratch them. As you can see, it's very, very long. Uh, the entry-level car has a manual sliding door, but middle grade upwards. This is a premium. Uh, this will slide back by itself and will reveal absolutely gigantic uh, private jet style seats. They will extend on your leg extenders. You have little glass controllers over the side. They have, uh, like if you're ever in kind of the front row in an Airbus or a Boeing or certain seats, uh, emergency exit rows, you'll, you'll be familiar with the little table that comes out and goes across your lap. Same thing in here. These will recline for when you're charging really really handy if i'm critical there's kind of a lack of charging ports in the back here for devices but there is a three pin plug that you can use and there's also a little foot rest where you can extend your feet onto when you're kind of having a bit of a breather also there's kind of grab handles commode handles are called um depending on which model you go for they'll be bigger and smaller but uh, if you can go to that mid-spec one and you'll get that door that will uh, automatically close like this. Now, if you're using this car as a public service vehicle, you mightn't want to go for that because you're explaining to people all the time, no, no, don't slam it, it'll do it itself. So that can be annoying, but it does have auto door uh, on the side. Uh, it's very, very tall. I'm nowhere near six foot, and as you can see, the car is towering over me, so it's big. The charging port is on the other side of the car, and actually, I didn't want to try it, but I wonder if you try and open that door when it's charging. I presume it won't slide back and catch the charger. Uh, so on this side, and the rear of the car, you have these huge kind of Darth Vader style uh, light strip that pops up, a bit of a boot spoiler. And again, from middle model up, you get an electric tailgate, big MIFA 9 badge on the side. Because people are, it's going to be one of those cars, people are going to say to you, what is that? That's a big door. So again, if you're dealing with a manual one of them all the time, that might be a little bit tricky. Now we come to kind of the party piece of the MIFA because you can adjust this bench. So let's say you were a taxi driver. I don't only just aim this video at taxi drivers, but yeah, you've got a large family. You can adjust this. So if you're not using the back row, um, you can't fully take the seats out, but you can fold them down so you have a bit more of a boot here. And even when this is fully up, it's still an all right space. So they're on sliders, give you more leg room if you need it. You can pull these up and actually they go really far back if you want. Uh, they click into place there. Uh, and you know, even with the uh, extra row of seats up, it's not a bad boot like there's you know you get a couple of 
bags in here. Let me, let me demonstrate for you. So this is my magnificent travel bag. And you know, that will easily tuck in there. It's like a big, big rucksack. So you get a few of them. Um, the lads in uh, Max has told me that with this row down, or was it, yeah, it was this row kind of tilted forward. You got four sets of golf clubs into the vehicle. So it kind of gives you a decent idea of context. Um, if you do want to lift anything out, there's a bit of a, bit of a lip here, but nothing major, but um, a lot of different adjustable aspects to this. There's a lovely kind of velour finish on the uh, headlining in the car and that gives it a, a premium feel and your belts and everything go, you know, well tucked away in here. So there's also Isofix in the two rear seats in the third row. That's a big selling point for people. Now to me, this is where the Mifa is the daddy. So here you have a little screen, you swipe over it. It shouldn't unlock even if you touch it, but if you don't want to risk it, you can slide this a little bit forward. So let's say you want to extend your legs, right? Seat just moves a little bit inside. Pushes you back. Oh yeah. You can imagine charging while you're waiting for this thing to charge. And this is going on. This tilts up, extends out. <laughs> this is proper luxury. But again, you're not going to experience this if you're the driver of the car. Now it says it's fully extended. I would like if that could go up more. Now, um, interesting enough, the back then can decline back. <laughs> like, you know, this is the way to travel. Now, if you could still have your seatbelt on, that'd be nice. Still have air vents for people. There's a kind of a, a little strip that goes on and brightens things up. And then you have your glass roof. It's not standard on the, the entry level car, but it is um, from middle upwards. So you've got vented and heated seats on these and it can massage you and it's, it's very good. Like it could work a little bit quicker, you know, but if you're back here enjoying life, what, what's the rush? You've got a little cup holder that pops out here as well. Yeah, the damping on that could be a little bit nicer, but like, come on, come on, seriously. Uh, very, very comfortable. Eyes are fixing these seats as well. So let's say you want to work while you're charging. You flip this up, press the button, a little table pops out. You can slide this. You can actually adjust this depending on who's sitting on it. And you could work away on your laptop on this. You could be charging it from your three pin plug that is down here. So really the name of this vehicle is Practicality. It should be called the Mifa Practical because it's, it's good. And there's loads of leg room in here and it's, um, it's a comfortable place to be lads. If you do need your MIFA 9 to tow, uh, it can tow 1,000 kilos on the back of the vehicle. So I don't know how long that's going to be with a trailer and the length of this. Well, probably want your wits about you. Let's check out the front. I'm going to start with what is not amazing inside this car for the price. It's not that there's anything really wrong with the interior. And to be honest with you, it's no less than probably Kia. Kia is maybe a little bit higher in terms of uh, build quality and, and maybe high and eye, but there are points at it that just feels a little bit plastic for the price of it. Uh, another negative is the wireless charger is way too slow. Even the plugged in charger is quite slow. There's only two USB uh, A ports, there's no USB C. I like the drinks holders, they're good. Good space down underneath your armrest. Um, this car will not drive if you don't have your seatbelt on. So it's like when you've left the handbrake on the car's kangaroo hopping the car will not drive unless you have the belt on. So there's, that gives you a sense of how intuitive the safety aids are. There's a monitor the driver condition option here. You can turn it off, which I did, but as soon as you get in and out of the vehicle again, it will always come back on. Uh, the climate is a little bit fiddly. You've got to swipe up for the heated seats. If you, if you buy one of these cars and you can't find the heated seats, swipe up from the bottom. All around the car is pretty decent. The door bins are ginormous and very, very decent. Uh, some of the, Clever stuff though here, like if you're ever in a car park, it's such a big tailgate. Have you ever heard that sound where you open your boot lid in a, an underground shopping center car park and you hit a pipe, or you nearly hit a pipe? You can adjust with your finger on the screen the angle that the boot lid opens to. And even if you do open it because you weren't sure and you realize, no, there's a bit more space there, you can extend it again and you can just, you can fine tune the boot. That's brilliant. Uh, here you've got a camera assist style rear view uh, mirror. There doesn't seem to be a flip down to turn into a normal glass mirror. So that's kind of a bit strange. Uh, you've got your driver set of uh, sunroof and then back there you've got glass roof as well. Uh, and they do open. So um, 
you know that's that's nice a bit of fresh air uh, and bits of extra storage down here so all in all the interior is, is all right like it's pretty good uh, ambient lighting that you can change so many different colors of you can have it pulsing and breathing as they call it we're just constantly on and um, if you do open a door for example uh, that will go red to warn you that it's open you've got blind spot tons of height and everything like that so you know it's it there's loads of gadgets. If you love gadgets, you'll love this. But if you're kind of overwhelmed by loads of different settings and screens for this and screens for that, then you probably will need to sit down with the car for about three hours and go on YouTube and search for videos and stuff like that. So um, look, let's take it out in the road and see what it's like to be behind the wheel of in the MIFA 9 because it is a seriously big bus. Before we even get driving, I like this. So this kind of is a bird's eye 360 overview of the car when you come to a junction or lights. Gives you an idea how to maneuver it. Anyway, welcome to the inside of the MIFA 9, which is uh, sold as the world's first electric MPV. Multi-person vehicle. And I've driven it from Dublin and I'm now almost in Kong in County Mayo. Now that chiming there is just a flavor of the level of sophistication and gadgets that you will find on board the MIFA, including a little sensor here that's keeping an eye on you at all times. That thing has told me I'm mildly fatigued. I mean, all right, I've got two kids. They don't sleep. Well, one of them doesn't. Uh, yeah, you have a point, but the way the car was able to work that out was because I was yawning. It came up on the screen here, mildly fatigued. Be careful. So the MIFA 9 can watch all kinds of things. You can turn that sensor off, by the way, but every time you get into the car and start a new journey, it comes back on. You can't turn it off permanently. Now, some of the other driving aids, like the lane keep assist, is far too intrusive. If I get even near a, a white line, of course. No, I won't do it now because I'm recording, but it's very, very intrusive. There is different levels that you can set it down. I had it on low. I had to turn it off. But all the different safety aids, you can kind of go into individual bits and turn off certain things. You don't have to turn everything off in one go. So what's the MIFA like to drive? Well, it's heavy, it's long, uh, it's 240 brake horsepower uh, or 180 kilowatt output. You never actually feel like it's 240. It's not fast. You don't get that shove in the back as you drive. So it's uh, it's got enough power for overtaking and things like that, but actually, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel quick, but that's okay. If you're carrying seven people, no one wants you to drive fast. In fact, it'd like you to drive the opposite. It'd like you to drive so slowly, you'd be going in reverse because someone will ultimately be moaning about the fact that you are driving recklessly. Well, you're not. You're just trying to get there sometime before Christmas. Uh, consumption wise, on the motorway, 29 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is high, yes, however, these type of vehicles are not aerodynamic. They're huge. So it's like a, it's almost like it's a byproduct that it's an EV because it's a big bus for carrying people in comfort. And it's got so much practicality. Even when you tinker around with the final row of seats, the boot is still really good. And even then you can collapse half the boot or half the seats back in on top of each other. If you're a taxi driver, for example, and you're doing airport runs and someone has decided to bring 20 million suitcases with them. You know those kind of people. So there's lots of practicality going on, but yeah, range wise, officially around the city, 350 kilometers. They're also saying maybe, so there's another two lads walk by in front to be fair enough, but like I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna hit them, you know? My foot's on the brake. Um, so 200, uh, 350 kilometers around the city, uh, they say 550. <clears throat> yeah, all right. Watch, watch my last video on the channel about getting from Dublin to Cork to Dublin. It's not confined. There's someone at the back of the car now. It's like, all right, okay, all right, fine. I uh, really like this rear view camera. So it's it's literally a camera in the rear view. It doesn't seem to be an old type of thing that you can do, like as in flick it and you get just glass. There's also a USB charging port up here, which is cool. Skoda, I think, were the first to do that. But it's a handy little thing if you want to have a dash cam up here. Again, if you're a taxi driver, you're driving for a living, you might love the idea of a dash cam up there. So I understand. Now, around town, it's dropping down a little bit to maybe 25 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Still not great by EV standards. However, uh, it's, it's a different kind of vehicle to the Volkswagen ID Buzz, but that's the most recent similarly sized, similarly not aerodynamic 
uh, EV I've been behind the wheel of and they're kind of on a par you know you put the boot down you do sustain motorway and the ID buzz you'll get that range and uh, consumption and, and the MIFA 9 is no different uh, it does feel heavy though but it feels kind of planted going into corners you're not going to be slinging it around but as I approach a corner here and I pick up the speed a little bit uh, it's all right like it, it's not really a huge amount of body roll in it actually so it's it's nicely balanced with the weight of the batteries it, it does its job um, it will read speed signs it will keep you up to date if you're breaking the speed limit as I said if you're yawning if you scratch any part of your body actually it will it'll tell you to stop um, and it will insult you it will it will tell you that uh, you're not paying attention when you're you are in fact you're probably just looking down because there's been another beep and you're wondering to see what 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 now three levels of regen it's not one pedal driving but there's enough severity in the most extreme version of regen that you can lift off and there's a good bit of braking force brake lights come on uh, the instruments display kind of very much reminds me of uh, something out of MG very 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 closely linked um, and there is a good bit of noise over the pillars but again this thing is like a big block going through the air meeting the fluidness of the air and trying its best to be aerodynamic but not necessarily succeeding but it's a it's a very comfortable thing to be in it's not hard uh, this size wheel perfectly suited I haven't really been on any bad roads today but like bumps are fine it's a kind of a nice little gentle bumps here on this the B road here as we cross the border into County Mayo Falcha Gameo here we are just across the border just like that any sign of uh, Sam McGuire no no no, no nothing no, I'm sorry maybe this summer lads um, but yeah it's very very comfortable you kind of you get that kind of wafty feeling and I'd imagine you're your passengers in the back will be similarly pleased with how it drives but if you go over a succession of bumps it does get a bit floaty uh, but not too hard not too soft sorry right. you'll probably drop down the spec list if you were getting this as your family car it will do the job very nicely indeed if you're a chauffeur or taxi person um, you might want to get the top of the range again though it's, you're still gonna have to pay for it um, but that will give you loads and loads of creature comforts but the mid-spec one is actually very very cool it gives you things like the automatic tailgate a lot of the additional safety stuff um, more cameras 360 cameras you know it's all right uh, it is a little bit unfortunate that you have to use a cable to use uh, Apple CarPlay and like that that should be wireless and they're USB A ports there's no USB C ports in this car at all from what I can find which is a bit of an oversight in my opinion so that's not ideal yeah it doesn't like it, it drives kind of like a car which is a compliment it doesn't feel like you've all this huge space behind you it certainly does not drive like a van let me assure you of that so I'm kind of happy out behind the wheel I've done kind of two hours of driving now don't feel tired no matter what that says and um, yeah it's just you know if you had a lot of people in the back here wrecking your head saying are we there yet can I have my song what's for dinner that might change it but on your own it is a peaceful sea of tranquility behind the MIFA 9 as long as you don't have to add any other humans to your close space time for my summary Oh, another beep. What's wrong now? Is it my driving? Is it? How's my driving? Yeah. If I wanted to get criticised, I would have just stayed at home. My summary on the MIFA 9. It's got fantastic practicality. The price is going to be prohibitive for a lot of people. I do understand that. The charging speeds could also be better. And the kind of safety stuff is far too intrusive. And the fact that you've got to turn it off every time, that is a little bit annoying. But I think we're going to see this more and more in cars, particularly Chinese cars. It seems to be the way they want to go and how they want to monitor driver behavior and, you know, keep you out of the ditches. And OK, fair enough. But some people just won't like the amount of intrusiveness going on with that uh, it's a massive bus 
uh, it's going to, it's just going to be the prerequisite of certain individuals with lots and lots of cash. I get that. Maybe the entry level might be something you can look at. Uh, if I was a chauffeur company and I wanted to be setting an example of using EVs for certain clients, that could probably be of interest. It's certainly interesting from the point of view of here's the size of vehicle we can now create that can carry loads of people, all their bits, and be an EV. So from that sense uh, point of view it's, it's very very interesting uh, not perfect but an unusual vehicle and great to have this size of vehicle in an ev should your wallet allow you to go to that option thank you very much for watching this review of the all-new maxis mifa 9 and i'll talk to you in the next one